Hi on MPI, brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Every single week, Lady Adafruit user power of engineering, WES, you find the things you're looking for on DigiKey site. And this is the segment where it's all new products. So you might be looking for the thing you might not even know it exists. You might not even know you need a new product introduction. You might not be looking for something, but it's going <laughs> to find you. Right now, Diodes is the company. Yeah. And there is a. Uh, well, there's a little diode in their logo. How cute is that? I love. Arrow. I love. You love that stuff. I love logos that have the thing in the logo itself. So, yeah. Northwest Airlines, one of my favorite ones. FedEx, okay. I really like. Yeah. There's a lot of ones that are very, very, very special. Diodes, is there. That would be a cool book to do. Yeah. Of just logos that have the thing itself. But it does get gruesome. There's a lot of chicken places. Chicken in the logo. There, there's a barbecue place. There's a pig. So, some of yeah. the animals that you eat there in the logo. Diodes. You know what? No one's getting hurt. Not gruesome. Okay, so this is what's really interesting. So what's interesting? This is a backwards. I actually was looking for this product. And somebody emailed mm. us and said, "Hey, can you make a breakout for this chip?" And then I was researching it, and I realized it's actually a very new chip that was highlighted at Digikey. So I thought I'd talk about it. It's the diodes AP seven seven three three two and one uh, series chips that do um, USB PD. EPR sync control. Okay, mm. I know there's a lot of words there. Mm. Um, so there's two chips in this family. We'll talk about both. And we've talked about USB power delivery, which I'm going to call USB PD um, before, because it's this, the cool technology that we're kind of living through right now where, you know, every product that we used to own had a um, USB DC jack and you'd have to match it up. Is it a 5 volt? Is it a 9 volt? Is it 12? Is it 24? Is it positive or center? Is it 2.1 or 2.5 millimeter? All that, you know, little diff different tips and stuff, that stuff all sucked. And we're slowly going through this um, transitionary period where now most people, when they buy new products these days, it comes with USB-C. And then what's cool about USB-C is that, yes, your computer, you know, and your old devices can use it to get 5-volt power. Um, but shown here on this, like, Raspberry Pi branded USB PD power supply, um, if you look in the middle, it says output 5 volts at 5 amps, 9 volts at, uh, I think, 3 or 5 amps, 12 at 3.75, uh, 15 at 3, and 20 at 2.25. So this power supply can supply different voltages de depending on what the device wants. So most devices like your Raspberry Pi computer might say, hey, I want 5 volts, but then um, your laptop might say, I want 20, and something that's kind of medium power might want 9 or 12 or 15. So the idea is basically, you know, getting rid of all those, you know, multiple DC power supplies that you have in a bucket. And then instead, as long as you have the power delivery chip that has the right profile, that has the right voltage and current, you use that. Now, you still have to make sure that the voltage and current is available from the power jack, but you don't need as many power supplies. And if you have a good one like this that has a range of voltages, it'll power almost everything you have. So, um, cool, we know about that. You know, there's these power delivery specifications and we've had chips and people, we've talked about um, power delivery sync chips that can help you, you know, detect we, you know, what voltage you need and automatically select it. But uh, what I didn't realize is that there's the standard profiles kind of on the left there, and then there's extended range profiles. So there's, you know, why, why stop with a specification where you can make more specification, uh, said the USB consortium. So the power delivery in 3.1, they've increased the available voltages. So before it topped out at 20 volts, but, and uh, I think like 100 watts. The problem is, is that a lot of the big laptops, like my, actually my laptop needs 140 watts. It's like a 16 inch ultra bright screen with, you know, all these blah, blah, blah things in it. It needs 140 volts, and so, so 140 watts. And so um, the new power delivery extended voltage range adds 28, 36, and 48 volts. And the reason it has to go up in voltage is that the connector and the cables themselves are maxed out at 5 amps. You cannot put 5 amps through those contacts, more than 5 amps. And so if you want 240 watts, you have to give 48 volts, which is still you know a safe voltage. But... Um, that gives you a pretty good chunk of change that can power, you know, servers and racks and computers and stuff. And if you look at that second, you know, on the bottom half, then the second bullet, there's an adjustable voltage power supply mode. Mm, interesting. Mm. So you can have an adjustable voltage from 15 volts up. 
And there's also a thing that they don't mention here. And I was talking to Phil about this. It's like, this is like the least documented, <laughs> misunderstood thing about USB power delivery 3.1. There's a, a new thing called PPS, which is programmable power supply, where you can select a voltage between 3.3 and 20 volts in uh, 20 millivolt increments and 50 milliamp um, constant current limiting ranges. So you can actually really select exactly what voltage and current you want to have. And this was popularized by Samsung, which is probably why you haven't heard of it because like a fruit company hasn't used mm -hmm. it yet. And what it allowed you to do, and this is actually kind of brilliant. Basically they did this so that their tablets and phones, the charging circuitry wouldn't overheat because you would basically say, look, I'm charging a you know 4.2 volt battery. I want you to give me exactly 4.5 volts. So I don't have to dissipate more heat than necessary in the device. You're just, you just change the switching power supply and the adapter to give me the exact right voltage. Um, so PPS is like this thing that it is supported in off the shelf adapters, but you have to look for it. <laughs> for example, Anchor, they call it like Power IQ 4. It's called like dynamic power distribution. Like nobody seems to use the word PPS. Um, but what you can do is if you look at the manual, and you look at the spec, like you go through the last page of the last <laughs> book of the last manual, it'll say at the bottom here, I've pointed out PPS 3.3 to 16 volts up to 40 watt max. So you'll know that that power supply, and it does say it on the device itself, but you know, it's actually hard to get a photo of the device itself. Like, but anyway, so. You know, it's cool is when people ask what to do, I'm just like, well, it's easy. Just take a little more with you to Best Buy. I know. Uh, and you look easy. at the last page of the last no, booklet. It's of the super yeah. easy. What's the big deal, everybody? Okay. Just go to Best Buy and bring a little more. Okay. But if you want PPS support, basically, which, which is, you know, which is interesting because it's like you can really tune the voltage. This chipset, the AP, well, the ap 337 2S, which I just talked about, the I2C controllable version can do both the extended voltage, you can do up to 28 volts, and you can do the PPS configuration so you can set the voltage and current limiting directly. Now, if you don't want to use I2C, you want something kind of off the shelf and much easier to use, the 33771C, which is kind of like the sister product, also kind of handy. It doesn't do the PPS mode, but it does do up to the 28 volt, like extended voltage mode. And you set the voltage and current with a resistor, which is kind of nice. You don't need I2C. So it's great for like, mm. Hey, I have an old, we have an old product that we're updating. We want to use the USB-C, not DC. We need nine volts at two amps. I don't want to spend, we don't want to add I2C because there maybe isn't a microcontroller even in the device. This chip will do the job great. Um, and you do the standalone selection just with some resistors in the middle there. And it has a little thing where what if like nine volts isn't available, does it accept five volts? And I'll look at the table and figure that out. And then there's an LED that tells you whether the, uh, the, the selection of the voltage and current you wanted succeeded. There's also a couple other uh, cool features. These are in the um, I2C version for the most part. Um, there's cable drop compensation. So if you're using PPS mode where you can select the specific voltage that you want, if you want a certain voltage and it has like a sense resistor built in, you can have it slowly bump the voltage up until you get the exact voltage after the cable that you're looking for, just kind of neat. Um, which if you remember that Raspberry Pi adapter, it said like 5.2 volts at five amps, that's trying to account for the voltage drop. And then there's over current protection, which I kind of liked, under voltage and over voltage protection, so it'll automatically shut off. You can get eval boards for the C version, that's the standalone, and for the S version, that is the I2C controllable version. And the chips are, themselves are also in stock. Um, really nice pricing too, about like 65 cents in quantity. Um, a really good price compared to other USB sync controllers, which are easily like two or three dollars. This is, you know, it's so cheap that it's actually like the, this getting the ability to like get the exact voltage you want. You might be able to go with a cheaper power supply, less heat sinking, especially with that PPS mode. Um, not have to worry about like getting a custom DC adapter you can use it off the shelf USB-C. So like, I love the affordability. Like, mm -hmm. These are chips are really coming down in price. Thanks to uh, Diode Inc. Okay. And that is I on the for this week. Hi, on NPR.